My guest this evening is very much a man of the theatre. I think it would be true to say that he lives for the theatre, and over the years he's been very successful in bringing the theatre into many of our lives. He is John Chilvers of the Grand Theatre in Swansea. John, uh, you're not born and bred Swansea, but I know you feel yourself a Swansea man by now, but uh, where are you actually from? Well, actually, I was born in Norwich, in Norfolk, and both my parents are from um, from Norwich. In fact, Chilvers is a very common name. There's so many Chilverses in um, in East Anglia, and we, you, if you if I meet one, I always know they they uh, came from East Anglia. But in fact, I actually left there about uh, uh, when I was four years old and went to the West Country. And my parents, for the rest of their lives, lived in Chippenham in Wiltshire, which isn't all that far, really. So I went to school in Carn in Wiltshire, uh, to the uh, John Bentley Grammar School. And uh, from then, of course, I went straight into the RAF, straight from school. Chilvers, then, is not a stage name. No, it's a, it's a real name. There are some Chilverses in Swansea. I've seen them in the, <laughs> in the directory. <laughs> And it was really in this service mm. that I sort of became interested in in theatre. I always had been at school, you know, with with school productions. And I remember once when I was uh, uh, very young, we had to write an essay of what what do you want to be when you grow up? And and I wrote this uh, this essay all about wanting to be a film star. So I, I was always interested in cinemas and, and theatres and acting. But it wasn't until I got into the RAF that I was actually able to sort of uh, do things. I didn't go to a drama school. Mm. And um, uh, in the RAF, I did a, a, a fantastic lot of shows, you know, sort of, uh, with um, uh, actually acting in them. And um, it was my first uh, experience of directing mm. uh, when we sort of did concert parties and um, things like this with RAF personnel, you know. Mm. I was quite a long time in Northern Ireland um, uh, before I went to India with the RAF and uh, uh, we had a, a, a particular concert party that used to sort of tour around at weekends and, mm. and sometimes we used to back um, uh, very famous people. In fact, I met uh, George Formby, the late jo Did great really? George Formby, um, uh, doing that. In fact, we provided the, the um, rest of the program and then George used to go on and do his act at the end. Leaning you know. on a lamppost and all that, yes. <laughs> yes. With, his, with his Beryl, his formidable wife Beryl. Was she really? Oh yes, she used to have a fur coat, but she always used to carry a, a hanger round with it, and so that uh, when she took it up, she was able to, to hang it up. <laughs> Very formidable lady. <laughs> I had an interesting answer to this question when I put it to Arthur Lowe when he was at the Grand recently. Uh, was he from a theatrical family? He said no, that the only connection with the theatre was that uh, there was a family story that uh, a long dead uncle uh, had been kicked to death by a horse in a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll risk posing the question with you, uh, John. Are you from a theatrical family? Uh, no, we had no interest in the theatre whatsoever, except uh, my uh, grandfather on my father's side, actually, I am told, used to run a Punch and Judy show. <laughs> and he was a tailor by trade and did this in his spare time and did it for children's parties and used to make the puppets and carve the puppets himself. And it's been sort of my ambition all my life and I'll never be able to trace them where, in fact, those puppets are. But that was the only connection with the with theatre or entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll stop asking that question. <laughs> Your career then, you say that uh, you developed the interest uh, in the services in the RAF. Uh, what year was that? Was that during the war? Post -war? Uh, no, that was dur during the war. Um, uh, 1942 I went into the RAF, I think it was 42. Uh, maybe in 41, it's such a long time ago, I've forgotten. And, and uh, this um, concert party went on, and I went to India, and uh, and we did shows there. And so when I came out of the um, the RAF, I didn't really know what to do. Well, I did know what to do, uh, but it, I was then too old, I thought, to go to drama school. And so I went straight into rep. I, Mm -hmm. I must tell you that the, my, my um, attraction to the theatre was from the acting point of view in those days, though I had had some experience in the RAF of, of actually directing shows. And so I went straight into a rep at um, High Wycombe. It was uh, a company that was um, formed from ex-service people, and three ex-service men had got together in a, a local swimming bath, which had been closed, and converted it into a theatre, and I was there for uh, a year. In fact... 
a great local connection I developed there because my first professional producer was Malcolm Graham from Swansea, mm. of course, Ruby Graham's husband, uh, poor Ruby, who uh, died a few um, uh, months ago, uh, last year sometime. And uh, uh, that was my sort of first connection with people from Swansea. Very hard training indeed, I would think, a rep like that. How many productions would you go through in a season? Well, I mean, it was uh, one a week in those days, and you didn't get a holiday until after six months. Mm. You know, from from High Wycombe, I did pr um, uh, seasons at Colwyn Bay, two at Colwyn Bay in North Wales, and one at um, Ashton, uh, just outside Manchester, in fact, part of Manchester. And in fact, that's when I, you mentioned Arthur Lowe, and in mm. fact, that's when I, I met Arthur Lowe, because he was in a rep just along the road. And in Ashton, I stayed there for, I think, three years, you know, and I I just had three, three fortnight holidays in that three years, and I was a, in a play a week. I mean, it was, it was um, uh, uh, very hard work, and it was amazing the sort of standard that one, uh, one sort of attained in that week. And in that company, it's quite interesting because there were people like Uther Joyce, you know, who mm. unfortunately died a few, you know, Mildred, mm. and. Um, uh, uh, a lot of television producers that I know who are in that programme. Um, uh, the author of the play that Arthur Lowe was in, we seem to be going back to Arthur Lowe, like Dor Derek Benfield, who'd been in The Brothers, he was also a member of that company. Um, so, you know, sort of, it was a very high standard company, in fact. This was virtually pre-television days, John. Oh, uh, yes. So you had good audiences all the time, I would imagine. Didn't you? Yes, yes. Um, people sort of flocked to the theatre. It was pre-television. I remember while I was at Ashton, that was the year of the coronation, and, and nobody had television set except um, uh, some friends of mine and the whole company, I mean, not in their digs or anything, and the whole company went to this one house to watch the coronation on television. Um, uh, it was pre-television days, and then, then, of course, it was only BBC television. Mm. The commercial television came later, in what fact, a, uh, after I came to Swansea. What was public taste then? What sort of productions were they? Murder in the Red Bar, no. Well, <laughs> well not, not quite. quite. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not, <laughs> not that quite. <laughs> not, not quite as bad as that, but, but they were that sort of um, uh, what people still call plays, I suppose. They had a, a, a really good story. They were farces, comedies, murder plays, uh, thrillers, uh, plays like uh, I remember Johnny Belinda that I played the, the Doctor in, which was a famous film, and I played the Ronald Coleman part, I remember, in Random Harvest. This was all at Ashton, you know. And, and it was great, very hard work. Did but you work then with anybody who has now gained recognition as one of the greats? Um, I wouldn't say... Yeah, well, I suppose um, Dirk Bogard, I know very well Bogard. Uh, now called... Uh, he was then called Derek, of course. Mm. Derek uh, uh, Bogard. Um, uh, I suppose he's the, the one who's become the sort of biggest star that I know. Uh, um, uh, offhand, I can't remember. I'll probably remember as we talk <laughs> a few more. But from then, of course, I graduated from Rep to touring, uh, touring plays. And um, uh, I'm mentioning that because it is through touring plays that I first uh, made my connection with, um, with Swansea itself. Because, in fact, I played Swansea Empire. Did you? It was a, a play, I hesitate to mention the play, it was a, a, a sex play <laughs> called Call Girl. The advertising material was the champagne of all sex plays. And it so happened that we played Swansea Empire um, Holy Week, the week before Easter. And uh, in Swansea then you had a paper called Swansea Voice. And I remember um, uh, the headline on that paper was, What a Choice for Holy Week. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you'd find yourself in wheels, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but we were off Good Friday, actually. Um, uh, we didn't play in the Empire on Good Friday. As a lot of your listeners will probably remember, there used to be a, a traditional variety show which was done for charity on that day. And so we had a day off. And so I remember going to, to Mumbles um, on the Mumbles train in fact, that was my experience of um, of the Mumble Strain, and I remember coming back to Number Ten for a drink. You know, it was 
was mm. the first time I'd seen that bear in the in the middle of the pub. You know, it was it, it was a, a marvelous Good Friday. And in the evening, of course, we went to the Grand Theatre for to see the show there because there was a rep company w um, working at the theatre. Uh, several people I knew in the show and uh, and the whole company went along that night, had a sort of busman's holiday mm. to go to the Grand Theatre. Before we follow your Swansea connection and all that you've been able to achieve at the Grand, uh, can I refer you back to something you said earlier? You said that the initial ambition was perhaps to be a film star. You've stuck very loyally to live theatre. Was there ever a temptation to attempt film or certainly television? Uh, no, because by the time television became popular, I'd got so interested in directing that I was I ceased to be interested in acting. In fact, that tour that I was talking about that came to Swansea was the last acting job that I did. I, I found that um, that acting was a little unsatisfying. I must stress that I was a very bad actor. I was <laughs> never very good at all. I realized this myself and I found it very unsatisfying, um, uh, particularly touring. I mean, that particular tour that I'm talking about was a 14-week tour. So imagine 14 weeks going around the... F uh, sorry, if not... <laughs> it was a 40-week tour, you know, going around the country, sort of... Um, one um, one place a week, living from suitcases. It it was awful, you know, sort of. And I wanted something sort of where I could sort of settle down. I also wanted a an end product. I mean, in the arts. I mean, uh, if you're an artist, you can uh, see the finished product. In a, uh, 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 if you're a writer, you've got something r at the end of all your work. But uh, if you give a good performance on the stage, it's very fleeting. It may happen once, you know, it doesn't happen every night at mm. all, but uh, there, there are some times when you think, you, I've done really well, you know, and that's very fleeting. And, and I found this was sort of evading me. There was nothing ever to sort of record those sort of moments. And I thought, I want to see what I've done for my work. And this is how my interest in, uh, interest in directing sort of came about. At least you can sit back and, and watch what you've sort of created, the image you've created, and you can and watch that during the run. But with an actor, you, you get nothing. You're only as good as your last performance and all that. Yes. Exactly. Was there then the beginning, maybe, of a realisation that uh, something also had to be done to keep the theatre alive? We're now talking about mid-50s and onwards, and the television influence was becoming apparent, and certainly on the theatre. Did you feel then that you wanted to work uh, on your own theatre uh, to make sure that it, it, there was an art form that lived? Well... I didn't at that time. Um, uh, the initial uh, instinct was to start directing. And um, on this tour, in, actually in the Cardiff New Theatre, I met the Willis family, who were the owners then of the Grand Theatre, who then invited me, knowing of my interest in directing, in, then invited me to come to Swansea and uh, run the Grand Theatre for them. Not run it, uh, it's completely wrong. To come and direct a company. It was my first chance of, of direction. And in that first company that ever came to Swansea, I got all my um, friends together, which included Tom Bell. Of course, he's one I should have mentioned earlier, of becoming uh, really famous and extremely good actor, a very great friend of mine. And I asked them all to come to Swansea for a six-week season. This was my first experience of directing, six plays in six weeks. The season was very, very popular. We still only had BBC television. And the um, Willis family then asked me to stay on. And in fact, having come from, to Swansea for six weeks, um, I have never gone away from it. Uh, but my interest in keeping the theatre alive came with the, with the advent of commercial television, because suddenly, this was after I'd been in Swansea about a couple of years. Uh, um, commercial television started and everybody stayed at home. They wanted to watch the adverts, it <laughs> seemed. And nobody started to go to the theatre. The, my first year in Swansea was the year that the 
empire closed down. Uh, Sandy. It, yes, it was. Um, uh, when I first arrived in Swansea, it was um, the pantomime was Win Calvin and uh, Ossie Morris mm. in uh, the pantomime, and in fact, Win Calvin I had known in rep in the oh many many years ago. I was in Blackpool and he was in St Anne's, and in fact, he came to the station to meet me my, when I first arrived oh. in Swansea and fixed me digs and. Uh, 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 the empire had closed down. That was the first of the Moss empires to go. And from then on, theatres were closing down. And, and it then became a, a crusade, from my point of view, of keeping the, the Grand Theatre open. With the realisation then that you were committed to this one theatre, what were your ambitions then, other than the obvious one of keeping it going? Well, was to uh, make it successful, you know, sort of uh, try to make it successful, try to preserve the audiences, uh, keeping the interest in theatre alive in Swansea. Uh, we, we went on the, the old rep way of um, doing a play a week and having a pantomime and things like this, eventually started doing our own pantomimes, um, and people came to those, but eventually, I mean, uh, the, with uh, the increased uh, cost of things, it was quite apparent to the Willis families and, uh, and myself that we couldn't keep going as a, uh, a privately owned theatre. And so we turned to Swansea Council for some sort of financial help. They gave us this for a couple of years, but then it was obvious we couldn't go on, and that's when the Willises decided to close the theatre. I said, well, offer the theatre to the, um, to the uh, Swansea City Council. And that's in fact how the theatre became a, a, a civic theatre. Hmm. Um, uh, fortunately, we had a rather, in, uh, you know, we have an enlightened council, we, and we had then, uh, and they took over the theatre, originally only renting the theatre and eventually sort of buying it. And so it uh, has become a civic theatre. Um, one of the few places, I mean, all over the country, um, theatres are just sort of closed down. I mean, I remember at one time we were the only theatre in Wales. Even the Cardiff New Theatre had been bought by Mecca for bingo, and uh, there was no theatre in Cardiff alone. You know. I, might, I imagine that must be, uh, must have been the big nightmare, that uh, you could keep the politicians happy on the authority and to keep the wolf from the door, especially those making big offers to change it into a bingo hall or whatever. A garage, I remember a, a, a local garage proprietor coming around looking at the site, you know, the Willis's had asked him to come and see it, and I thought I saw the, the whole building, that lovely, lovely auditorium, disappearing and becoming a garage a motor showroom, showroom, you know. Convinced that it's been well worthwhile, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am, yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, I think, looking back at it, I think all, all that you've achieved, I think uh, in introducing children to the theatre, you've done a vast amount of work with your ever-memorable pantomimes. Yes. It was my first memory of the theatre. That's why I wanted to go into the theatre. That's why I wanted to be an actor. And, and it is most ch children's... Um, uh, initiation into the theatre and by doing a good pantomime and making it a good family show I think this is how we can sort of encourage young people uh, to start coming mm. and, and this has been apparent over the years I think it's amazing you know the number of, of young people that we have got into the theatre you the young the young married couples you know particularly when they start having children mm. aren't able to come because of um, of commitments with babysitters and things like this and and nowadays the 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 older people don't seem to come as much as young people but but most of their interest has been created in pantomime and that is why pantomime is so important we cannot talk about the uh Grand Theatre and Pantomime without remembering Ryan. No. No, a very great friend of mine, and I still feel uh, a great loss about Ryan. I, I have a copy of his record, and, and I have never played it, quite honestly. And I just cannot play it. Um, he did five pantomimes for us, and as you know, our pantomimes last uh, three months of the year. It's a quarter of the year. It's a, it's a, a qu five years, a quarter of the year we spent very close together. And, um, you know, I, 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 I find it very even difficult now to, to talk and, and think about Ryan.
of course, the Grand Theatre was virtually amongst the last things he saw before he, he went to the States. Yes, it was. Um, he was on holiday after his um, pantomime when uh, that tragedy happened, and it was so, it so happened a year that I had been very ill myself, and um, it was all a, 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 a fame sort of um, bad experience mm. from my point of view. The last thing he said to me, phoned me up before he, he flew on the Sunday before he flew to America and he said, you know, you know, sort of, oh, don't forget, keep on taking those pills, you know. And, and um, uh, in fact, I had a card from Ryan the day before um, uh, I heard that he died. It arrived in the post that morning. Had he lived, John, in which direction do you think he would have gone? Well, I think he would have become a, an international entertainer. He was always very sort uh, worried, not exactly worried, that's the wrong word, but he was always um, wary of crossing the border and, and uh, entertaining in um, uh, England. Uh, his series, Ryan and Ronnie, in the English version, hadn't been nearly as successful, as you know, as the, as the Welsh version. And the number of offers that he had to do pantomime in uh, England. I remember one morning he came in and he said, I've had an offer to do Wolverhampton next year. You know, what shall I do about it? And I said, well, you know, sort of, um, if you want to go to Wolverhampton next year, you know, there's always another year for you to come back to me. And he said, well, I don't know. You see, at the end of that week, he came into me and said, no, uh, I'm not doing Wolverhampton. If you don't want me back um, this coming Christmas, um, I'll ha I'll spend it at home. I won't um, I won't do a pantomime. And he was always very worried about um, uh, how he was sort of be going to be received by the public. But but he would have, you know, sort of that would have eventually come. And I know he would have been a great success. Um, I I'm convinced that in the pantomime field anyway. And yeah. of course, uh, I never worked with him. We had planned the year that he died to work together on some straight plays. I never worked with him in, mm. in straight theatre, though I saw him play in um, Sunshine Boys in Cardiff, and I know that uh, it was a, a, a magnificent performance. And with Beloyan, yes. Mm. Mm. And that would have, um, um, he would have eventually become a, a sort of, a really sort of great, a great, I say, mm. artist, because he was so talented in so many fields. I mean, uh, uh, he would have been greater than people like uh, Max Boyce, I am certain, though Max, I have great admiration for Max, but he would have become one of the greatest, I am absolutely convinced. Well, let's look practically at, at your job. You have to uh, uh, fill that theatre, hopefully, right throughout the year. And you've had to meet public demand and changes in taste and all the rest of it. Let's look at the world of drama and your, uh, your rep season, as you're in the middle of it now. Uh, what are the uh, favourites? Mystery? Romance? farce or do they want romans in britain <laughs> well uh they still want thrillers i mean you've only got to put agatha christie's name on on a poster with a play of hers and uh, and it will do I extremely good business but you can't do agatha christie all the mm. time um uh naturally you have to move with the times um last year we did peter nichols privates on parade and we, it was one of our most successful box office attractions because a lot of young people came i mean this season we have included a uh, joe orton already and we're we're doing uh a, a, a once a catholic which is a, a controversial play and uh, the young people enjoy these plays they are good plays, and um, they should be included in a repertory season. On the other hand, they still love musicals. I mean, uh, two years running, I've done Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor like Dreamcoat, you know. Mm. This year, we're including The Boyfriend, and I'm sure that's going to do good business. We're also doing a musical, The Rocky Horror Show, a rock musical. This will bring the young, young, the young people in. And, of course, with The Rocky Horror Show, we're, we're not only doing it in Swansea. We've got the rights to take it um, on tour, and we're doing it in Cardiff, and, and in uh, Theatre Cluid in Mould, uh, as well as doing it in uh, uh, most big cities in the north of England, Bradford, Sunderland, Liverpool, Manchester. At the other end of the musical scale, of course, the opera season is always 
Very popular. Very popular in Swansea. Yes, opera is popular, but of course, opera is becoming very expensive. Uh, they they have to carry a, such a, a large orchestra, and of course, opera stars' fees are uh, are very high compared with um, with straight people's fees. But um, opera is popular. So is ballet, classical ballet, not contemporary ballet. Uh, Swansea doesn't want to know about contemporary dance, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Are the days of review and variety dead? No, again, we, we do very well with our variety seasons. Um, uh, and of course, pa our pantomime, which uh, is light entertainment, is one of the most successful in the country. Uh, Swansea audiences love variety and, um, and pantomime and uh, um, shows like that you know i mean um, uh, tommy Steele when he came and in, in fact he fell in absolutely in love with the theater he said it was the best date that he'd ever played in his life you know really the yeah they, yes yes they, it's such a it's such a lovely theater uh, but of course you can't go on giving people sort of variety or light entertainment the whole time one has to do other things it's a it's a theater that caters for everybody in any case you know sort of if we're getting money from the from the welsh arts council which we are we have to do things as well that are uh, approved of by the welsh arts council so i would imagine you see the future uh, as uh, continuing a potpourri through the year uh, of items to attract children, the young people and the traditionalists like myself who come down for the opera weekend and the like. That is the answer, you think? I, I think that is the answer. And of course, there are big plans to sort of uh, 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 pull down quite a lot of the theatre, keep that lovely auditorium and expand, make the stage larger. Uh, tie it up with the now disused bus station to make a big new arts complex and so uh, we can have the plans are being drawn up at the moment for the alterations to the theatre so that really first class international companies can be attracted to Swansea and if that happens I think some of the uh, uh, the, the success of the theatre um, is what, which is what I've been aiming for will have been achieved. Do you have time for any pastimes? No, I don't really. <laughs> so maybe not. I I am very fond of collecting sort of records. I love musical shows myself, and I've got a, an enormous collection of musical comedy records, show records, which is a. Uh, 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 a favourite of mine, and I think, and I collect blue glass. But pastimes mm. itself, uh, uh, it's a it's a full day. I'm afraid. I mean, uh, um, I usually start about half past nine, and I get away about eleven o'clock at night. Well, time is running out, but let's look finally at the future. What are your ambitions? Well, I'm getting pretty old now, and. Um, as long as the theatre stays in Swansea, as long as it is, uh, uh, as long as it is rebuilt, I think that um, I will have achieved something in life. You certainly will have done, John Chilvers. Thank you very much indeed for your conversations and for all your good work for the arts and the ground in Swansea. And that's it from Conversations with Wynne for this evening. Yeah.